started. All right. As you probably all know by now, I'm Sue. <laughs> and I, I thank you so much for coming to our uh, expo and participating in and enjoying it, spreading the word. And I really appreciate you coming to support Dr. Sam and Corey. Their work is so important, and it's bigger than we can even know right now. And I would really love for all of us to band together on a mission of peace and love to help planet Earth evolve and all of humanity evolve quickly. So without much further ado, without any further ado, I'm going to pass the mic over to our featured speakers, Dr. Sam, the discoverer of the Bosnian Pyramid Complex, and Corey Good. First question, yes. Uh, this question's for Corey. Can you hear me? Um, yesterday you mentioned the importance of not only meditating but taking action. And, um, and you suggested instead of talking about aliens and star races that we um, instead perhaps share technologies and uh, new healing modalities and stuff like that that people might be more receptive to. And my question is, is there or could there be a repository for, um, say, articles, reports, videos, websites that have this information that we could then share with our family, friends, and network? There's nothing like that available currently, but that is an excellent idea. It'd be nice to have a one-stop resource, but I want it to be a resource that's provided and put together by multiple people and like not just me or not, you know, it needs to be a, a collaborative effort. And because you know how it is right now in the community, there are so many people that are, like I said yesterday, that are stuck in their own little belief systems, and they formed little formed little denominations, and they're behaving like the uh, the right wing Christians that they like to make fun of, you know. Um, so we need to break out of that, and the best way to do that is for us all to to work together and have information that's available to share, like you said, that doesn't uh, lean towards any one denomination or belief system. Thank you. I've seen Santa Claus. Um, I've wondered about genetic experiments at Fort Bragg in 73, so I was born there. And my uncle Stan worked for GE six months on, six month, uh, one month off. And like, how do you go about coaching someone? Because um, he always told me you just bite on people for 12 hours a day, <laughs> which I totally believe. But maybe he knows more, and how do I coach him? Because I wouldn't want to put him at risk for a mysterious death. <laughs> So your question is how to approach? Yeah. Well, you have to tailor your approach to each individual. That individual is going to be more scientific-minded, of course. So like I said, um, speaking with them, um, not in a combative way, you know, sitting there saying, hmm, material sciences have um, evolved so much over the last hundred years, but we're still using the same combustion engines that we were in the late 1800s, or that technology. You know, can you explain the discrepancy in uh, acceleration of those technologies? You can open a, a very innocuous conversation with them, and then you can begin to lead it into, um, you know, electrogravitics and uh, healing technologies and get their opinion on it. I wouldn't give them have them drink from a fire hose in the beginning, plant seeds, and then come back often in water. <laughs> if we overwhelm people, we're going to do more harm than good because they're going to pull back and clam up. Hey, Corey. Um, question on channeling and channelers. I'm just wondering if in your experience in the 20 and back um, on the glass pads or in your experience outside of that, if you had, um, any information on Cryon and Bashar, uh, both of them are American-based channelers. Over 20 years, I've been following both their work extensively. Uh, Bashar is channeled by Daryl Anka. He lives in Los Angeles. And Lee Carroll is the channel for Cryon. Cryon basically would express itself as the angel that created the Earth's magnetic grid, and it has been here since the beginning of Earth's creation, kind of helping humanity along until we, here we are today going through the ascension. Bashar is basically, if you listen to his work, he's um, about a five foot tall great alien from the uh, Sasani planet 2700 years in our future that's here as well to help the, the ascension process they both came in around the same time the harmonic convergence around 1987 so they've been doing their part to like you kind of raise the vibration of the audiences and hopefully get the message of their version of disclosure or truth to the community so they've got pretty big followings 
they both said, and I've been following almost 20 years each, so much of what you've said yourself the past couple of years that I've been following you, it's incredible. Just even where we are right now in the solar system and going through the, the, the waves of energy we're in, Crying said that entire story many, many times over the past couple of years before I heard you say it. So I'm just wondering, how does the secret space program look at those entities that are also been here doing their role? And do you have any information to share on that? Um, how, how does the secret space program look at people like Bashar? Yeah, do they try to stop them because they're telling truth or spreading information that's not in line with their information? Or you know, I really don't know. I have I did not hear of. Uh, I, I don't know the other person, but Bashar I, I know of because immediately when I came out, I started to get a lot of questions about um, their information. Uh, the other person I'm not aware of. Lee Carroll. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I just, I'm not aware of. Okay. Um, but mm -hmm. a lot of people are receiving information like they are through channeling and other means. And the only channeling that I was aware that was mentioned when I was in the secret space program or in the programs was uh, the raw material. Mm -hmm. And they wanted the uh, upper brass to read it and be familiar with it, but the rest of everyone else, they, uh, they would tell us it's Luciferian, you know, it's, it's, it's from the devil. And uh, a lot of the uh, military types that were participating in these programs came from very uh, conservative Christian backgrounds. And um, the powers that be know when to wave that little Satanism or uh, uh, Luciferian flag to cause a visceral reaction in those types of people. And you know, we've seen it done recently with me and some of my people. They try to say we were devil worshippers and stuff to get people to clam up and um, you know divert their attention. I would assume that they would do something similar uh, to Bashar and and the other person up in the programs, but they were not mentioned when I, um, when I was there. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, just, just on that note, since you mentioned the Lucifer and the way they try to maybe trick you into thinking that's not good. It, it worked with me. Yeah. It worked with me. I had stayed away from the raw material for a long time uh, in forums and other places. If someone mentioned it, I had a reaction of, oh, uh, the people I trusted told me that it was Luciferian, so I stayed away. It wasn't until very recently that I took a look at the material and read it. The, um, the people in the programs that were above you, that were giving you all of this information, your in, the, in, in the, yeah, the programs, the secret space program. But Cor Corey, in that 20 year period, there has to be a lot of people like you that, weren't, that were good people, intrinsically good. How, at a certain amount of time, didn't they kind of figure out that what they're doing is not good, especially if you see slave races on a planet or you're harming innocent life? How they, I was on the research vessel for years before I found out that there was a slave trade going on. And it was only because of uh, I had uh, a personal relationship with uh, this certain officer, and she had because she did work on the communication system, she had quite a bit of access that I, I never got to go to certain parts of the ship. Well, she was able to do so, and she began to socially engineer the different men that were there, and uh, because she had somehow gotten a um, little bit of information that something like that was going on, and um, I didn't believe I didn't believe it. Um, and we were brought in, she brought, got us into a secure area where she opened up some pods and we saw uh, bodies in it. And it wasn't just you know, the slave trade, but there's you know, uh, genetics that are being harvested and, and traded off world as well. Um, so the compartmentalization that goes on, um, you, you're not gonna hear what you're not supposed to hear. It's just not gonna happen. And Almost all of the people that I worked with were engineers and you know sci scientists of different sorts, and uh, they were very focused <clears throat> on completing their task within the certain amount of years that they were pulled in, and they really didn't care about anything else. That's what they were focused on. They were not given information about anything that was going on outside of their program. These people were also very dedicated, and they were positive people. They were, they were told that they, what they were doing was going to uh, preserve the human species, 
and uh, save the planet. So they, they fully had good intentions, the people I worked with. So I have a question for you too. Could you both concur that the pyramid structures on the planet are part of geomancy, which is, uh, I believe, trying to raise the vibration back up or assisting, or maybe it's helping filter or so? Thank you. Um, is the Bosnian pyramid on ley lines? Three ley lines? <clears throat> Um, very recently, about two years ago, I started talking about, on Cosmic Disclosure, the cosmic web and the electromagnetic filaments that connect, I mean, everything in time and space is connected. Every galaxy is connected by these electromagnetic filaments, every star within those galaxies, and every planetoid or, or object within a star system is connected to the star through these electromagnetic filaments. Each planet has a grid system on it, and as the planet spins, the electromagnetic filaments, uh, in, like electricity, electric universe, connects to different nodes on the planet as it's turning around. From the information I received, they were balancing these nodes and controlling these nodes to where they were able to um, open these or predict the opening of these different portals. And it wasn't just, not just portals, they would use uh, when the portal wouldn't open, there was a still an energy signature in that, on that node area, in, in these sacred places. And they, uh, shamans would use these energies for different things, for healing, for, um, uh, they would meditate within them and be able to reach other realms to pull down information. So I, I'm sure that there's a lot more to these grid systems than what I'm aware of. But what I, what, told, what, what I was told was that uh, it had to do with the cosmic web and balancing and uh, completing circuits within the grid. Geomancy is just a part of the answer for the pyramids. What we have measured in the case of Bosnian pyramids, location is extremely important. Below the Bosnian pyramid of the sun is a huge iron plate, as I explained yesterday. Iron generates electromagnetic fields. The pyramid, the most powerful geometrical shape, and it comes with the energies. It amplifies this electromagnetism. The second form of the energy, underground water streams, about 65 feet below the pyramid, underground water. Water flows, releases negative ions. The pyramid amplifies. The third one, 70 feet below the pyramid, is the second underground water stream. Be between the two parallel water streams, electricity is generated. The pyramid amplifies. Number four, natural magnetism. Number five, ultrasound. How do we get ultrasound? Electromagnetic field hits the quartz crystal, and then we have so-called piezoelectrical effect, which generates mechanical waves, which is a sound, or infrasound, or ultrasound. In our case, 28 kilohertz ultrasound. The pyramid amplifies this ultrasound. The next one, orgone energy, or life, or chi energy. In this conference hall, about 40%, outside 50, villages 70%, pyramids 100% of the orgone energy. So the pyramids are actually huge energy amplifiers, or energy machines. At least the oldest, the biggest, the most superior on the planet, in China, in Mexico, in Bosnia, in Egypt. I, 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 I would like to ask a question real quick, or a couple. Uh, <laughs> you, you mentioned uh, uh, an iron plate. Has, have, has that been analyzed by a metallurgist? <laughs> when we got the frequency of 28 kilohertz at the top of the Bosnian pyramid of the sun, we sent results to three different labs in Croatia, Serbia, and Austria. And they said, you had to have iron plate, or it can be iron ore, or it can be even spaceship, at the depth of 2,240 meters or 1.3 miles. Because of the depth, of course, we did not get there. But we do have the you know, source of the electromagnetic fields. Okay, um, have 
Now, I'm, from what you stated, I'm assuming that there's a high crystalline, crystalline uh, content in the rock. Have people witnessed or reported any type of plasma orbs in the area? <laughs> well, I, I asked for a reason, and he touched on it. Um, that it occurs in a lot of places, and what? Oh, he did. Okay. Well, well no, no. Listen, he he um, he touched on something that I, I found very interesting. Um, a lot of these mountains act like giant capacitors, and as he stated, they're almost always water streams going by, and the water, the friction of the water going across the crystalline, uh, causes a piezoelectric effect that energy builds up in these mountains until it has to release. And what occurs is it releases these plasma orbs. What I was showing them, but not everyone was here. Let me just, <laughs> okay, Corey. Uh, this is me with Eric von Däniken. We are in the underground tunnels under the bars and pyramids. And his assistant is filming us. While he's filming us, we can see all those thousands of orbs flying around us of different sizes, at different speeds, going zigzag, having fun. Well, what they said the orbs are? The orbs, well, according to our research, they are simply spherical energy entities with intelligence. And, okay, I'll show him the river of orbs. Now, here is the floor, the cable, and the, you will see millions of orbs flowing. Literally, river of orbs. Ch uh, there you go, thank you. It's a clay. Clay. Clay is a natural flooring here in the tunnels. However, the walls are conglomerate with a lot of quartz crystal. So now almost none, and the next moment you will see millions of them. Look. No, you can't see them. Majority of people cannot. I did have a few psychics who claimed to see them. You can even invite them. Yes, sir. What have you learned how to harness those forms and program them? We don't harness them. They are simply different entities, like us. They simply vibrate differently than us. We don't need to harness them. Good. You need to let us know. We simply respect their existence. Yeah. Interesting, huh? My question is about mind control. I'd like a quick definition of the techniques that are used for mind control and how we are able to break through that web and maybe how we can help yeah. others. They, they use, of course, energetic mind control to pacify people but, and, and stuff like fluorides and stuff like that in our water. But the most effective mind control is the mind control we do on each other. They'll give us... Um, you know, uh, social norms, that's, that's a type of mind control. Um, different religious uh, systems that are, uh, that we, uh, that are perverted at, and used as control systems. Uh, most of the um, mind control and control grid that's going on is self-imposed. They've tricked us into doing on ourselves. Uh, there's definitely an uh, energetic, uh, they've exploited these energetic grids that we have to cause them to put out um, fields that cause people to be more docile. Uh, so, you know, and then we have the more direct effects of like the uh, voice of God technology I've described on uh, cosmic disclosure and, um, and, uh, and other technologies that, you know, interfere with the uh, extremely low frequencies um, that the brain emanates you know, the magnetic fields of the brain. They've learned how to um, manipulate and, and read those, read the data coming through out of the magnetic field. They learned how to do that a long time ago. And not only can they read what's coming out, they're very adept at putting the information in, in, in pretty much the same manner. How can we help others with when, like just by being a loving being? Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, being loving, meditating, and all that's really good. But it's, I mean, it takes, it's, it's going to take action, you know. You, the only way you can really wake some of these people up is to shake them. There's, there's also this uh, component of this artificial intelligence, very ancient artificial intelligence, that uh, many different galaxies are dealing with. This uh, artificial intelligence, it's, it's a signal that's being broadcast and it affects our consciousness um, in, a, in a very heavy way. The solar flash that I'm told that is going to occur, and like I said, with the scientists in the program, some of them believe it's gonna be a 360 degree full circumference mass coronal ejection. Some of them think it's just going to be uh, some electromagnetic pulses that come from the sun. Uh, so there's, there's no agreement on what's going to occur, but there is agreement that whatever does occur in this solar event is going to take out all of our electrical grid, all of our technology, which they then state is gonna be the perfect time to bring in these newer technologies. And when, when this occurs, it will also um, affect, uh, it'll cl clear out the um, AI. The thought of a uh, solar flare, uh, mass coronal ejection is very scary. But uh, if, it, if it doesn't wipe us out, it's, uh, it's going to end up being very beneficial. It, it could be because I was told that uh, they didn't say three days. They said that the entire uh, circumference of the sun was going to uh, be a mass coronal ejection, is what a lot of these scientists believe, and that the sun for a number of days will become like a giant sunspot, will be very dim, it, a number of days. Uh, yeah, that's da David likes to, uh, to to make things you know uh, match certain things, but yeah, but yeah, I was told uh, a number of days. Um, yeah. it, it, I mean, it takes eight minutes for the light to re for, go from the sun to Earth for us to reach it. I mean, if, if something like that occurred on the sun, we're not going to know for eight minutes. Hi, Corey. Have you heard anything that they're going to do a test on the grills? grids next month, like shut down part of it at different areas? Uh, of the electrical grid? Yes. Uh, no, I haven't heard anything about that. Uh, my question's for Dr. Sam. Um, I'm curious, uh, has your team or any other team discovered any gravitational anomalies? Like, I understand that you said the resonance frequency was like the levitation frequency. Um, I was just curious to know, or like, see if you've any found every find uh, any stones floating or was that resonance just used to like maybe make the stones levitate into place and it's stuck with that frequency? Thanks. We do measure 28 kilohertz ultrasound in the tunnels and on the top of the pyramids. Sun and the moon, a dragon, love, earth, tumulus, which are the part of the complex. 28 kilohertz frequencies, what I explained yesterday during my lecture. Who was at my lecture yesterday anyway? Oh, there were people. So, when you do experiments with the ultrasounds, 21 kilohertz, 22, 23, when you come to 28, then you can see that very light objects like ping pong balls, they can start levitating. This is the frequency we measured in the tunnels. You walk through the tunnels, you feel light. But, on the other hand, your first question, uh, gravitational force, I don't think it has anything to do with the ultrasound frequency. Uh, we did measure, you know, gravitational force, it's regular like outside. However, the ceilings in the tunnels are conglomerate, so it's just sand, pebbles, rocks. No binding material. So when you look at it, it shouldn't be there, it should come down to the floor, but it's standing there. And uh, I had one of our friends, you know, she feels the energies, she can see the energies. She told me that at the original time when they built those tunnels, they used some type of plasma to keep the ceiling up. Of course, for me, it's very hard to explain to mainstream archaeologists, say, hey, you know, we have some plasmas there, <laughs> by the way. They make sure that the ceilings are not come down. But <laughs> just in case we do place wooden support, in every tunnel that we open. Hi, Corey. So happy you could make it into the 
East Coast here, and I hope to see you in the Washington, D.C. area sometime soon, where I live. Um, but anyhow, uh, my question is, I have 50 questions, but my most urgent question, my most curious question is, I had read or even maybe heard on one of your programs how the Alliance was thinking of taking out these, um, these platforms or maybe space stations that were orbiting the Earth that were um, using, um, I don't know, uh, what source or what energy it was to, to, to control us. There were like three of them that he was talking about. I think this, this came from David Wilcock. And they're thinking of taking these out. And, and if they did that, it would have the effect that uh, we would have like an acid trip uh, on our consciousness. And uh, it got me thinking about... It'd be more like coming off of Vicodin cold turkey. Yeah, something like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, would, it thinking, would not be a pleasant experience. Yeah, exactly. And I was also thinking about uh, how the, 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 the orbs that have been dampening uh, all of these energy fields are are basically dissolving away or, or, or going away, uh, having less effect on the dampening. What can we expect from all of these, these cosmic energies that uh, essentially we're going to be unprotected from them very soon, if not already? What are your thoughts? What, do you, what, is, what is the information that you have on this right now? In terms of the effects on us, how is, how is these, these new energy waves that are coming in? Okay, well, the, I mean, I, I, I don't know if I explained this yesterday. Um, as our solar system, our solar system is passing through, um, you know, we use the esoteric, you know, a high vibratory, you know, area mm -hmm. of uh, the galaxy. But it's uh, basically a, a, a gas cloud, an energetic gas cloud. Mm -hmm. And as we pass through it, it's spinning, and we're like a dynamo going through this high energetic cloud. The energy feeds in through the north and south pole of the, um, electromagnetic field of the sun. It then feeds, uh, comes out from the sun. It, and the same thing happens to Earth. As these energies are coming, um, leaving the sun, they are um, interacting with the Earth's magnetic field mm -hmm. and causing an electric reaction to where it goes into the north and south poles. And a lot of these energies are emanating out through these grids and um, and, uh, and, and, and just, you know, like mountains, uh, you know, right. th like we discussed before, that uh, uh, we're able to carry the electric charge. Well, would you say that we're kind of experiencing the early effects that now of kind of like an end time madness? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's, a, it, it's affecting uh, the consciousness of, of, of everyone and everything on the planet. Uh, but getting to this grid system, uh, this is what they called an Orion grid system. It was put in out out there eons ago, and um, it causes um, um, a field to, to go around the Earth. That they're not all space-based. Some of them, uh, they utilize um, the, the grid, the ley lines, the grid. What, um, what the um, parts of the Alliance have discussed is that they want to shut off this grid. So, one of the reasons that we're having end time madness is A, because of this energetic increase. But not only do you have this energetic increase coming from the sun, but the beings that control this mind control grid have had to turn it all the way up to max for it to have the same effect. And we're being hit by all these different scalar waves, electromagnetic waves, and uh, uh, parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that uh, we don't even really know how to measure. That is affecting the consciousness of everyone on the planet. I mean, we're seeing it right now, the end time madness. You see, you know, people that are positive, that are starting to kind of bliss out, um, people that are very negatively oriented, that are becoming more so, um, and they can't hide it anymore. They can't hide the, the negativity. And then the people who have mental illnesses are having a lot of difficulty. They, they are, are and they're gonna, it's gonna get worse. So, uh, I hope that answers your question. I have a question for Dr. Sam. Um, when I was watching your video for the first time, I did notice what you pointed out yesterday, that the pyramids, the corners of the two sides look like they go down much farther than what the base is you're measuring. 
when you look at where the tunnels are that are going through the pyramids, are they down in that lower section or are they just in the top area? Officially, we use number of 220 meters, about 720 feet as the height of the biggest one, the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. But the tunnel entrance, and if we look at the topographic map, is about 280 meters, or about 900 plus feet. So, officially, we would come below the pyramid. However, on some of the maps, we can see that actually the height of the pyramid is much more, about 1,200 feet, which would mean that would get, we will get actually inside the pyramid using the tunnels. And so far, they're all leveled. But we work only on the first level of tunnels. Just last year, we discovered the second level of tunnels, about 40 feet below the first one. And it seems that there are between three and the seven level of tunnels under the ground. So after 12 years, we are still really scratching the surface. And also, that beam of energy that comes off the top of the pyramid, have you studied that at all? Like, do people have healing if they sit there? Is it good to sit on the top of the pyramid? Like, what, what is, how does that frequency affect the body? Okay, let me answer that question. And from that, my answer, I would like to ask Corey a question. So let me show you just a few <laughs> slides. Let me get everyone else involved in this. So it will be easier to follow the whole thing. So this is the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. So from here up 220 meters, 722 feet. When we started the excavation, three, four feet below the soil, we are finding rectangular blocks, which we have analyzed at seven institutes for materials. It's artificially made concrete. Some people call it geopolymer concrete. Some people call it synthetic concrete, much better quality than ours. So if we, on this photo, remove this green color, change it to brownish, this is what you are getting. This is probably the original look of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. Now, on this illustration, here is the Sun Pyramid, 220 meters. Now here we removed the greenery, and you see how this side goes all the way down to the bottom of the valley. So now we are talking about 1,200 feet. So if we go back in time, the probable look of the whole valley of the pyramids. So the sun, the moon, dragon, love, temple of Mother Earth, five structures. But the reason we came here when we started finding the purpose of pyramids, we are using different scientific disciplines. On the PIP camera developed by Dr. Oldfield, to the right we can see the town of Isoko in the central Bosnia, and bioenergy fields, they are all horizontal. That's the natural ambiental fields. But the moment you get to the Sun Pyramid, to the left, and to the Love Pyramid, we can see vertical fields. Meaning, you have energy machines, energy is generated inside the pyramid, energy is getting released through the top, hitting those horizontal fields, they become vertical. <coughs> or, in more concrete terms, now we can see it 3D. Now, the Sun Pyramid, the town of Isoko, and look at inside, the red color. The energy, it's getting accumulated. So we'll be seeing more and more of the red. You see, red, red, everything is red now. Energy is getting accumulated, going through the top, hitting those horizontal fields, they become vertical. But now, why I'm doing this? I want to show something else. I want to show something else. Let's look what at it. What is the blue energy? Uh, these are different frequencies. Look at this. This thermal signature, which is different than the others. You see how the, the shape is oval? The moment when we are getting the most of the red, it will be next moment, this oval-shaped vehicle is coming inside the pyramid. And then, a few moments later, you see, 
it's leaving. Like oh a dwarf. It's a dwarf. Yes, it looks like the spaceship because of its size. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't see that. Here it is. This is a part of the question. <laughs> <laughs> and then last year, what we did, we sent a drone with different scientific instruments above the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, checking on electromagnetism, and then separately on electrical field, on magnetic field, on temperature, on, uh, you know, organ energy, ultrasound, infrasound, seven different measurements we've done. The most interesting stuff were uh, in electrical field, electrical, no magnetism. Magnetic aspect is not there. It looks like this. This is zero meters. This is the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. We have this energy beam, electrical in nature, of 13 feet. And then it starts to expand. At the height of 21 meters, or about 70 feet, it is the widest and strongest. And then it's getting narrow. And then it expands, getting narrow, expands, getting narrow. So these are the scalar waves, which you just mentioned, the scalar waves. Their properties is they are much quicker than the speed of light. And then we were checking where is this, the scalar waves, where are they oriented to? And here's the orientation. You see the sides, east, west, north, and south. In the afternoon, the orientation was mostly to the southwest. At the noontime, south. Now let's see how our sun moves. In the morning, east. Noontime, south. Afternoon, southwest. Evening, west. Right? Sunrise. So, the scalar waves, noontime, south. In the afternoon, southwest. Meaning the scalar waves follow the path of the sun. And those who were here yesterday, they could hear that we also measure the ultrasound in this very energy beam, which is basically the information. So the scalar waves are oriented to the sun, so there is a probably communication between the two. And then using the sun as the cosmic gate going through other solar systems. So for the first time, it's been measured and scientifically proved that there is a connection between sun and the moon. So we do have scalar waves on the top of the sun pyramid. So now my next, my question for you, we could see the, that oval shaped vehicle coming to the pyramid, which is obviously energy machines, using it as the gas station. That's one thing. And then also the scalar waves produced by the pyramids. Any comments there? Yes. Um, Basically, what I was shown is that the ley lines or the natural grid system, they were manipulated and used in ancient times by off-world groups to create, to, to change those ley lines into basically like a circuit board. That these um, different ancient structures, such as pyramids, were then shooting energy out straight up and most of the time it is just energy it's like shining a flashlight into nowhere but as the earth spins and different star systems rotate into the path they are activated and it is sending this faster than light energy through these electromagnetic filaments between the stars it's utilizing the cosmic web this is this can be used for bi-directional information sending, like a, uh, a Wi-Fi system. Yeah, that's the conclusion we are getting. But then, in our case, the good thing is that this is the only archaeological site, important archaeological site, where we are totally open. All others, Egypt, Mexico, Peru, Egyptologists do not let physicists, engineers, to do the measurement because they stick to the story, tombs for the pharaohs. And uh, if you, I know there's a lot of questions, but if you don't mind when you're talking about this energy beam, we also 
detected the ultrasound inside this beam. So what we did, we converted the ultrasound to something that we can hear. So I'd like to, to run this uh, audio file. I think it's very interesting and uh, maybe somebody can decipher what it means. So, we were on the top of, uh, there was a question uh, actually about the top of the pyramid where we detected the energy beam. When you go there, five minutes is fine. After five, ten minutes, you become a little bit dizzy. And then, uh, you know, dowsers came, they measured on the Bovi scale. Bovi scale, humans are from six, seven thousand Bovis to twenty, twenty-five thousand Bovis. Everything up to twenty-five, thirty thousand Bovis, very pleasant. Over there, fifty thousand Bovis. So it's just too much. Uh, so in this, within this energy beam, 13 feet, we measure the ultrasound. Now we notice when we are measuring the electrical field, that it's getting stronger as it moves away from the pyramid. It's getting stronger, which is a, a kind of anomaly because you would expect if the source of the energy is inside the pyramid or below the pyramid, that the signal is getting weaker and weaker. But here, it's getting stronger and stronger. So theoretically, this energy beam can go through our solar system, can go here. And with this ultrasound, obviously, we have a form of the communication. Ultrasound is the information. So the pyramid becomes a very powerful communication device. And we, again, we are the first one who are proving that. I believe it's the same thing with the Egyptian pyramids, but they simply do not allow people to research that. One of the reasons they removed the capstones a long time ago is to remove that communication. Um, now, my question is, that sound, is it constant or does it spike? I mean, uh, what, what, what I'm wondering is, as if during the time if, it, if the signal changes, have you star charted to see if stars are in alignment, if that's affecting the, the, the field? Because that does sound a little bit like some of the NASA sounds of the stars and sounds of, you know, uh, cosmic sounds. Okay. What, what we could see is that the peak is 28 kilohertz. Then it comes again to 28 and 28. And so we have the same distances. We have blocks of ultrasound coming in blocks. And then we measure the nearby hills. We don't have the same peaks, we don't have the same distances. We even measure one pyramid hill in Italy, Monte Pavione, four triangular faces. But again, no same peaks, no same distances. Just the Bosnian pyramid of the sun. Because it is an energy machine. You have those blocks. Yes, yes. The, okay, like, like a sine wave. Are, are these peaks consistent? Or, or do they change? It's, is it very consistent? Okay. Okay. I, w one of my next questions that doesn't apply now. I was going to ask if you took uh, and, and did an analysis or a chart of these uh, sine wave peaks and change it from uh, convert it from analog into digital to see um, if there if there's any type of information that can be uh, gleaned from it. Yeah, it sounds like it. It, this, it sounds like it's um, a, a giant uh, wireless network communicating. Uh, the, one of the reasons I was also asking about the peaks uh, and valleys of the sine waves uh, on, uh, uh, in the measurements is that, you know, I, I was wondering if uh, star alignments were having any effect as we rotate uh, and the, the point of the pyramid is in alignment with a star if uh, you're able to, you know, trace that and see if there's any changes. Well, 
When it comes to alignments, our first question is how many pyramids we have. In Egypt, we are talking about three, Teotihuacan, three main pyramids, Valencia and Spain, three main pyramids, Montevecchia and Italy, three main pyramids, and they have exactly the same layout. In Bosnia, right now, we have done uh, excavations on five pyramidal structures. Most probably, we have seven because there are two pyramid hills, but completely private land, we cannot do any excavation. So if it is seven, then we can be talking about the uh, Pleiades. But then the question is how many originally, because what we have as radiocarbon dating is 29,200 years. So we go back for 30,000 years. At least two huge flood waves that would destroy smaller structures. If it was nine, then we can talk about seven sister of Pleiades and the father and the mother. But as we know, the star cluster of Pleiades have 104 stars. So I don't think this is like the, the major the, the, the thing as far as the pyramids, because for me, it's even more important the layout of three main pyramids, sun, moon, and dragon, they form perfect equilateral triangle. It is very obvious. Egyptians, you know, they have this triangle, but it's not regular, it's not. But here, we have equilateral triangle. Have you looked at 25,000 years ago, the star charts from that time era, and compared it? Thank you. Can I ask a question? Sorry, I've been waiting a while. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my question. I was wondering if your arm was getting tired. Yeah, you know, it is. It is. I'm not that strong. Um, I want to take you back to a time when you um, discussed something that happened with Kyrie when um, she did something on you and you were able to release some kind of a negative negative influences that were coming out of your body. You said it was kind of quite startling. Yeah, and um, I'm, I have concerns about those personally um, and I want to know how do you go about doing a self-cleaning in terms of something like, like that I have. Well, it's not a one-time cleaning. Every, I, I, everyone has them, and you, you can clear them, and usually they come back. But how do you clear them? Way. I mean, it's, it's um, a... Well, um, and in this case, she used this crystal that, you know, she rubbed, and then it started making this tone, kind of like when you do the outside of a glass to make that high-pitched noise. And that somehow drove them out. Um, now, um, if... The, and, and they connect to your energetic, um, your, to your chakras, to your energetic centers. If um, you have a, like a behavior or, or something that's going on that's keeping that, I guess, kind of portal open uh, to allow them to come back, they're going to continue to return. Um, identifying what type of entities they are is, is important and uh, figuring out how to change your behavior or your environment to prevent them from coming back is, um, is just as important as removing them. Okay. Yes, I, I mean, keeping yourself in a certain vibration makes it very difficult for them to stay attached. But, you know, that's very difficult because when they're attached to you, they're keeping your vibration low. And so, I mean, you're gonna have, you have to over, overcome and then um, keep your, uh, your vibration high through diet, uh, through different practices like meditating. Do you do anything to practice that? I mean, do you practice meditation? Yes, I, I meditate. I, I, I presume that everyone here meditates whether they think they are or not. Anytime you're sitting back in deep thought and daydreaming, you're in a meditative state. So uh, we, we try to make things a little too magical with meditation sometimes. You know, it's, it's something that the body naturally does. Everyone meditates, you know, they go into, you know, these different states, you know, um, you know, you go into deep theta when you sleep, you know, when you're dreaming. But yeah, I mean, meditation is important, but, you know, we, we, we don't need to make it uh, a completely magical kind of thing. It's something that our bodies naturally do as we're going in and out of different states. Uh, of, of awareness as we're waking up and going to sleep throughout the day. Um, a lot of times you'll feel yourself pull back and you start to daydream, uh, you know, and you're going into a meditative state. 
Um, but having a more focused meditative state, focused with intent, you know, is, is important. You know, of the intent of not just going into the meditative state, because we all do it, but to uh, then um, be able to, it's kind of like lucid dreaming. You know, everyone dreams, but uh, every once in a while someone will have a lucid dream. But once you learn how to recognize a lucid dream and how to control it, then you start to have a different experience. And it's the same with meditating and getting into those different states of consciousness, from, from my experience anyway. Yeah, I have um, a question about um, on your latest video I was just listening to before I came here about the Anshar. You had mentioned they were trying to move into a temporal route, a temporal anomaly to escape the cosmic energies. I wonder if there's anything you can share on that um, more about. Yes, what they've told me is that uh, every, every cycle, which is 20 something thousand years, they sequester themselves inside one of these temporal anomalies. Um, during oh, these cycles, the energetics change quite a bit. They, uh, they're fourth density beings, and uh, it's basically consciousness is what we're talking about. Uh, ascension is, is, it first happens through an expansion of consciousness, and then everything in the physical realm kind of follows. You know, uh, as I stated yesterday, uh, we're not all of a sudden going to have telekinesis and be flying around the planet when these energies occur. It's going to take, uh, you know, a long time for us to kind of acclimate to them and, and learn how, learn how to, to utilize them. So, Does that affect them in some other way that's different than us? Yes, it's, I mean, we are susceptible to these fields. So um, let's say a field that is, uh, our consciousness is on a certain vibratory level right now, a, a frequency. Theirs is at a much different frequency, and they're affected by these high frequencies coming in in a different way than, than we are. It's, it's not necessarily going to give them a bump up in ascension as it is us, because we're, we're lower down on the frequency level. They're above the frequency level of the energies coming in, you know, because they're basically, they, they claim to be us from the far future after we've already made this consciousness uh, ascension, this uh, uh, fourth density shift. Hi. Uh, hi, Corey. Um, actually, my question is a little bit close to what he said, too. Um, when we heard about the meditation during total eclipse and how successful it was, um, and now we were told it's only a small amount of light workers going to maintain and steward that. To be, so we hopefully we will have an optimal timeline. So my question is about how do we coordinate that? Um, seems like we scatter around different regions and we probably we get together on this kind of event. Is that a plan to help us to coordinate the effort? Because it's, look at this is how important, very small, very small amount, very committed light workers to do this thing. And it's, we know it's very hard to. Every single one of us go to different um, personal, family, all the obstacles. This is not the easiest thing to do at all. Right. Yeah. It, it's any any time anyone tries to form some sort of uh, cohesion for people to work together in that way, something magically pops up that divides people. And these are basically operations that are are done by you know these different intelligence groups. They do not want us coming together and mass meditating. You know, it's, it's, this is an uphill battle for us to be able to organize. Um, you know, the, um, I, I stated yesterday, our co-creative consciousness, we have the ability, not only do we have the ability, we're co-creating this experience right now. Everything is a vibratory illusion. We're given it cohesion by um, uh, some sort of an agreement between us. We're agreeing that we're gonna co-create you know, this environment. That's a lot of power, and that's also the power of these cabal groups. We hear about the black magic they use against us. Well, the black magic that they use against us is our own co-creative consciousness, abilities. We manifest things. They plant seeds in us, and then they give us a, uh, a catalyst, usually a heavy emotion of fear. And that catalyst will, will cause us to manifest what they want us to. Instead, 
you know, of us manifest, being tricked to manifest a prison planet, once we learn our co-creative abilities, we're going to be able to manifest whatever future we want. That's what they have to keep us from discovering. And that's one of the main reasons why it's been so hard to bring all of these people together to, you know, form a group that's going to do mass meditations that are focused on one intent. That's really what needs to happen. All of us that come together and we're all meditating on slightly different things, if we can find one intent to come together on, we're going to be able to manifest it on a, on a small level, but it's going to throw the balance off of, of, of this black magic uh, uh, reality they've created. Yeah, just meditating alone is going to, uh, because, you know, the hundredth monkey effect, we've got a, um, there's a super consciousness that, you know, we all tap into, you know, the Akashic and, you know, and then, you know, different levels. So if, yeah, if they can uh, prevent us from tapping into that information or uh, getting, uh, or just getting a bunch of people, even if they have different intent, the, um, uh, if you get like a fraction of 1% of the population all meditating, even if it's on different intents at the same time, it's going to affect the mass consciousness. And that, they, they do not want that happening because they are f affecting the mass consciousness in a way uh, that allows them to control. Excuse me, sir. Sure. I've been visiting very interesting communities on the planet that were trying to combine spirituality with the physical aspect. For example, in Italy, close to Turin, there is a place called Damanhur. Probably some of you heard about Damanhur. They've been there for almost four decades. Meditation is part of their daily life, several times a day. Very spiritual community. Then Auroville in uh, India, southeastern India, on the Indian Ocean. 50 different nations, village of 2,500 people, again, meditation, the focus meditation is part of their daily life. Kibbutz in northern Israel, several communities here in the U.S. But then eventually what becomes a problem is the power struggle, money, how to organize their communities. So even when there is an organized effort of hundreds or several thousands of people, you know, it seems that for some reason, one or another, they are not able to, you know, uh, get there on the track all the time. The problem with our society, the last seven, eight thousand years, we have, you know, less than one percent, you know, having most of the resources, 99 percent of us not being organized. We try to do something good, like he says, intelligence is there not to allow us to do that. So we need to get better organized. We need to get organized. Conferences like this, seminars, people talking about this, sharing the knowledge, the information, it becomes the major thing. <clears throat> Corey, what about these other races that are living inside the Earth? Um, it seems that uh, they have no choice than to follow the plan the Anchar have of revealing themselves, because once their cover is blown, their cover is blown. Um, they don't they didn't want to go along with revealing their identities and their and their their history and are, are they just going to do nothing or, or or what are they what do they intend to do well it, it depends on the group you're talking about there are many and i know that's the in, in the programs these bases where they called them embassies and they would call these non-terrestrials people no matter what they look like um now, now, what's the root of your question again? What are they? Well, well, oh, okay. what are they going to do? I mean, yeah. I, now some of these some of these groups um, want to come out under their own um, uh, under their own plan, I guess you could say. Um, some of these more negatively oriented um, people are are non humans, uh, such as the ones that are living under Antarctica right now. Uh -huh. They really want to have a future to where we have um, disclosures in a way to where we find out that, hey, there's an ancient civilization that's been discovered under the ice. This ancient civilization didn't come from Earth originally. This ancient civilization, that bloodline was genetically ma uh, mixed with the beings that were here on Earth, the humans that were here on Earth, to create a... Uh, bloodline to, to control the planet. Mm. This, um, what they would like to do, these negative groups, is for us to find out about these civilizations under the ice 
in a way that makes them look like divine, makes us accept a divine right of kings and begin to look at them as demigods. Um, you know, and they're going to, you know, be able to say, you know, we have, we come from this great race that, you know, once, you know, inhabited multiple solar systems, you know, we have all of this sacred knowledge that's going to help the planet, you know, subjugate yourselves to us. Well, you have positive beings that do not want that to happen, such as I was speaking recently uh, with intelligence people. They're very aware of the different timelines uh, that are going on. We were not supposed to win World War II. We were given a two-front war with two very um, aggressive enemies, so-called enemies, and uh, America wasn't supposed to make it through it the way it did, but America was receiving assistance from a different non-terrestrial group that had a different agenda. We would like to think they're positive. Uh, the same group that helped our forefathers set up this uh, country you know, to begin with. There, this, there, was a, there were a lot of hands in creating this country. It, very, uh, it was a miracle that it came to be a, in, at all because of the uh, adversity that they had. So there are multiple agendas and multiple plans in competition with each other right now. The one that wins out is going to become the new reality. That's one of the reasons we, we really need to get organized, put aside all these different denominational UFO belief systems and just say none of us really knows the truth, but we want the truth and just agree to that and that alone and work together. Thanks, Gary. Um, so I have a question about something a little bit different, but lately um, if you look around different news outlets, there's these images or video clips of um, anomalies of physical matter kind of froze suspended in space. So you'll see like planes attempting to land, but the plane is actually just staying still. You can hear the exhaust or you'll see like a, a bird flying. But the bird is flapping his wings and it really looks like it should be going far, but you can kind of walk 360 degrees around a bird. It's just staying there but flapping his wings. Have you seen anything like that? And um, is this like a time anomaly, or ha do you have any explanations or any insights on things like that? Uh, no, I, I would have a lot of questions, as in where this is occurring. Is it close to some of these energy grids? Um, these, um, we have, a, I said yesterday, we have a lot of time at our current level. Of, we know, we've understood, we can understand now, okay, there are gravitational waves, um, you know, space can be, uh, compressed and expanded, but we have a hard time with time. You know, these timelines uh, that, that, that people just, they can't grasp it. Yeah. But yeah, uh, the uh, time and space are both elastic. You know, they both snap back. Now, during these energetic changes, there are going to be different points on, uh, within the grid system on the planet that weird anomalies are going to happen. I don't know if this is one of them or not because I'm not really familiar with it. Well, a lot of these occurrences are um, by airports where the plane is actually landing and, and now the video is kind of expanded so you're seeing the point of view of inside the plane where people are in the plane looking out the window thinking like it's, we're not moving, it's very clear. And then from the outside of the airport people are recording the planes. You're hearing the exhaust and everything but the plane is just sitting there very still, not moving at all, and many other points. But yeah, yeah. I'll look into that. I, I'm not familiar with it. Okay. Uh, so I would like to ask Corey, have you heard anything or do you have any opinion on the crop circle phenomenon? Uh, I've been there. I've visited it. I've talked to a lot of people who have studied it for 25 years, and um, they do see these plasma orbs creating these uh, things in the fields. So I'm curious what you think of that. And also I'm curious what you think of the chemtrail activity. It seems to have slowed down this year, but it was really heavy the last five years and probably for longer than that. There, in the programs, there were um, several um, different theories about what was going on with the crop circles. Um, I basically just heard the scientists discussing the different theories. There was, there was no conclusion um, at that point. The, um, you know, 9-11 uh, and the 
uh, chemtrail thing are, are two things that I just don't have a whole lot of information on. Um, but it's, it's definitely, you know, I, I've, I've talked to a couple people in intelligence agencies and they've stated that um, some of these, the spraying is to um, reflect um, energy coming in, but some of them are created just to bounce um, communications waves off of. So that's, that's the extent of my knowledge on that. Uh, I don't know who's creating them. I know that we've been able to reproduce them, you know, um, with, uh, in, the, in the programs, they've been able to reproduce them, but uh, I don't know if this, this code has been deciphered within them or not in the programs. I, uh, I have a question for both of you, if you heard about uh, the stone circles in South Africa, like 200,000 of them? Yes. And what do you know about that? From Michael Tellinger? Well, he's been, of course, investigating Adam's calendar, which is very interesting, astronomically. But also, he's been doing a lot of energy measurement inside the ultrasound, the electromagnetic fields, you know, decibels. You move out of the circle, none of those measurements are there, only within the circle. So, probably it's telling us there is something below energy potent place. You got circle, when you have a circle, you focus the energy and stuff like that. Yes. But as far... Yes, yeah, that, that is one, this is part of the, of, of the field. But the stone circles, on the African continent, there are, according to Michael, not hundreds of thousands, but about 20 million. Sometimes they are very small. Sometimes there is like five circles. Sometimes there are more, two or three. And uh, now it was a huge construction effort. You would need hundreds of thousands of people for that. And as we know, that the African continent has been the least inhabited in the past. So we did not have this labor to do that. So how it was done, very often he shows during his presentations that power of sound can arrange or rearrange sand or on a larger territory, stones. So it's very possible that it has been done that way. But it's very, very ancient phenomena. So it's very interesting, yeah. Uh, that's questions for Corey. Um, I guess ever since I heard you speak about um, uniting the world with uh, mass meditations, that like that lit me up. And I've already been doing that to some degree with with the International Day of Peace. It happens every September 21st. So I've been working with a group of people around the planet that are already doing that. And so we're looking at how to bump it up to the next level. And, and I got to the place where, where you just spoke about, like, if we had one intent, but how do you get such diverse, that's my uh, passion right now, how do you get such diverse ideologies and, and thought forms and beliefs to, to focus on one intent? And, and I think that that's, once I get that or, or feel that, I think that will help me to uh, really work with, with that aspect. First of all, we have to find an intent that everyone can agree on. Um, you know, and it all, we have to overcome a lot of these different belief systems. Now, if, if you lower on the scale, none of the belief systems are going, not, you're not going to find any merging. But the higher and higher you go up, um, idea-wise, as in, like, you know, if we're wanting uh, to have better crops, that's a regional thing that people are going to meditate on. Or if you want better weather, uh, people will focus on that. Um, but as you move up to... Um, up higher level, uh, like people, it's not hard to get people to focus on peace, right. you know, world peace. Yeah. Uh, so what we have to do is find uh, s some sort of intent that everyone can agree on and that there won't be any conflicts. That's the first step. Um, the second step of organizing it, um, you know, it's, we're going to have to do a lot of trial and error still to get this right because mm -hmm. the powers that be, as they say, are definitely on their heels right now and are doing anything they can to make sure that we don't come together mm. in that way. Yeah. So it is, like I said, a definitely an uphill battle. Yeah. But uh, it, a lot of it's going to be trial and error, but it just takes the trial part. You know, we have, to, we have to do it. We have yeah. to try. 
Thank you. Um, thank you. That was very helpful. I just wanted to share a couple of things uh, that I found, find most helpful to deal with the energetic forces now. And it, it came from uh, a teacher that I work with. His name was Swami Kripalu. And uh, he, was, he was a Kundalini master. His main practice was alternate nostril breathing. And, and what I've learned, what that does, it really helps to prepare our bodies and our, and our physicality and our nervous system to uh, move into these higher energy fields. And also if we're clearing um, is the Native American sweat lodge. So if there's a, if anybody, if you have an opportunity to be in a Native lodge, that that's, helps to clear a lot of those entities. And so I needed to say that much. Thank you. Hi. I wanted to ask you, uh, you had posted something about uh, Netflix and that they were doing a 20 and back show. Could you share with us? On yes, that? it's very much in the planning stage. Um, what we're attempting to do in, in, um, is try to find different ways to get the information out and to use the tools of our enemy against us. Um, I, I stated yesterday, whenever you watch a movie, you'll go into like an alpha state, which is basically setting you up to, to be in a state that you're more susceptible to programming. Now, they're doing that in a covert way to uh, manipulate our mass consciousness. What we're hoping to do is in a very overt way, use those same tools, uh, use movies, use uh, different symbols in uh, like graphic novels and, and, and encourage people to, to put that information out in, in other ways in, in the same type of media that's used against us. If we can start to um, slowly awaken people, or at least soften them, you know, uh, a little bit to where they're ready to awaken, it's going to um, it's going to assist this effort that we're trying to do right now. So, um, yeah, we're uh, we're working with uh, uh, some well-known writers and producers and stuff like that, um, and we want to do. Um, a movie in a series about the 20 and back, which, you know, that's a very science fiction, sexy kind of topic. You know, people will want to watch it. Okay, you got them hooked. While doing that, put in different spiritual things, different things that are going to guide people to think, like, hmm, and, and challenge their own belief systems. Um, we want to do that, use a covert tool of the enemy to use in an overt way. Uh, but it'll be a good year and a half before that comes about. And, you know, we got, in, in the meantime, we need to find other ways to affect the mass consciousness through, you know, meditation and, and, and other things like what we're doing here. When you start getting, this is what I'm because you're talking to the choir here, is getting to the more conservative. You know, if you get a Netflix, which is not like Gaia, which is a pagan, a lot of people don't even know about Gaia. Just wonderful. It's something where more people who are more the conservative people I'm around, anyways, to begin to have this information, even subtly. That's what we, I feel is very important. Not just the. What's interesting is that the when it comes to the conservatives, most of the people who watch Cosmic Disclosure are conservatives. Uh, Gaia stated that they got the largest bump in viewers when they would advertise in Christian publications. So this is good. Now, Netflix is another good one. Right. But we need to have um, numbers of... The, yeah, money is, um, is definitely a problem. It's uh, a, cre a tool created by the enemy. And, of course, we want to utilize that against the enemy. Because to be here and talk to people about it, we're talking to each other. It's wonderful. But I go out to my family and... You have no one to talk to. No, yeah. You hit a wall. Right. Well, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, but most of the choir is not singing. Most of the choir is sitting there looking at the lyrics. They're not, uh, it's, it's all happening right here. They're not pushing it out. They're not sharing it. So the choir needs to start singing, but we need to find a song that uh, the target audience... Right, it's going to accept. I have to be careful how I sing it. Exactly. And that, and that goes back to not approaching people with eight foot tall blue aliens and approaching them with more. Yeah. Well, not even that. You need to tailor your 
conversation for each person. You have to profile them a little bit. Hi, Corey, I have a question. Um, I had seen you on Gaia talk about Kyrie had offered to give you a sort of a mind meld to tell you who you were, who you are, and who you will be in the future. And at the time, you were not open to receiving that. Later, I heard you say that you were becoming more open to receiving that. Have you received that information? Or um, when you, if and when you do, would you share that with us? No, I have not received the information. Um, I have observed Gonzalez very closely because he has gone through that process. And he literally became a, a different being. I mean, he is not the guy I, I knew before. Um, now, this may sound petty, but I was told that it would un profoundly affect my relationship with people I'm currently close to, like my children, my family. So it's a very selfish thing. I'm afraid, I'm worried that Gonzalez was one of the main reasons he was using, Gonzalez is in his real name, obviously. Um, he has family down here, and he... Uh, was very concerned about them uh, being targeted as a way to get to him. Now, he has changed in such a way that he's become a different being on a different mission, and he, th is, that, the, that relationship is not important to him anymore. Um, so, yeah, I have some intrepidation about that. If I, I've, I was told they offered, made that offer three times and I turned it down three times, if I ever get to a point to where I feel like I am ready for that, I am to approach them. And I am not there. Yeah. Hi, Corey. My name is Smarty, all over the internet. Earlier you mentioned about how people are using uh, technology, technology to manipulate matter, right? What if we were you? What if we can? What if we have the ability to do the same thing to combat what they're doing to us? We do have the ability. I know, because yeah. I'm one of them. Right. Yeah. Well, um, what's your question? My question is: Is there any way anyone of you guys would consider working with someone like myself who has the ability to do that? Well, we have to be willing everybody to work together. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely willing to work. <laughs> with anyone who has information or techniques um, and, uh, you know, to, and, and test them, you know, put them through some tiny scientific method to see, right. you know, what type of results we get. And if it's something that uh, turns out to be beneficial, then, of course, we'll do everything we can to try to get people to join together and, and adopt those, you know, new methods. Okay, because I have a, a website where people can go <coughs> and download free images and all you have to do is put them on your devices and they'll cancel out radiation and that's for free. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, what's the website? It's holotech.biz, H-O-L-O-T-E-C-H dot B-I-Z. How you doing, Corey? How you doing, Corey? Uh, Thank you. I was just wondering, uh, have there ever been any times that you've wish that you didn't have these experiences and lived a quote unquote normal life or do you feel yourself you're lucky to have experienced all this? Yeah, one of the, the biggest things I see from people, there's people that seem to be jealous, you know? I have people, uh, they're obviously not listening closely to me because um, <laughs> this is not a pleasant thing. When I'm meeting with these beings, they're they're not patting me on the back and saying, oh, you're going to be such an important person. No, they're, they're pointing out what a jerk I am <laughs> constantly. And right when I think, okay, I've dealt with that. Like recently I, I talked about, you know, when I was very young, I grew up in a very crazy family. Lots of abuse, uh, you know, alcoholic uh, um, uh, people that were veterans from different wars. And being an intuitive empath, I could read people. And the only control I had was controlling my environment, manipulating. And it became such a part of my personality that I didn't realize what a manipulator I'd become. Well, yeah. after I dealt with some of the things that they had shown me, and I thought, okay, I'm doing good, you know, I'm doing well. Well, they show me that 
about the mani manipulation part of myself. And they showed me the free will that I violated in so many people going back 10, 11 years old. And that was a major punch in the breadbasket, you know. Uh, so I immediately, that was, I started focusing on that. And the only pat on the back they gave me is they said, you're one of the few people that if we point something out, you don't go through all this denial and everything, you, you do it, you know. They, they like that about me. But they keep bringing stuff. I mean, you know, I've been dealing with the manipulation thing, and then I'm not going to, it's very private, then the next thing, and then I'm feeling good about seeing that I'm, I'm getting that, you know, under control. I'm not doing that anymore. So then they show me another thing that's even more intimate and upsetting that I need to change. So um, I've gone through quite a metamorphosis through the process, you know, a lot of quick growth. They've, they called a lot of it uh, karmic quick burn, and it's been very uncomfortable. But this has been going on f uh, in some degree since I was five years old with the communications that I've had. So, you know, be careful what you wish for. I get emails, how can I get my son into the secret space program? I'm like, what? <laughs> what? I mean, you're not listening to me, you know? You do, no, you do not want to be a part of that. Um, yeah, uh, you know, most of it is that, you know, people, they just want, they want some sort of validation and they're not getting it. Yeah. And, and they become upset yeah. with those who are. But what really ticks them off is when I tell them what I learned recently is that it's their higher self that's determining if they get contact, what contact type of contact they will get, or what they need to do to prepare themselves for any type of contact. You know, so it's, it's occurring from our higher selves. So if you get mad that you're not having this type of contact, then you need to go inward and figure out, you know, why and what you need to do to make yourself ready or to put yourself in that vibration. But no, this has not been a, a real pleasant experience.